Guten Morgen, guten Abend, it depends when you will watch it. Ha, we have Jendrik Ziegler with us tonight from Germany. Hey. Hey. <laughs> yes. So nice to be here, I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> So tell me, how are you feeling just uh, about after the song was the premiere? Tell me. Oh, I feel great. Like I, I got so much positive feedback. Of course, there's a lot of negative feedback too, because the song is, as it is, very special. But I knew that before. So I'm like, you go for it. You hate on it. You can love it. I don't care because I love it. And I will represent loving the song and loving the message at the Eurovision Song Contest. So I'm I'm actually really relaxed and really really positive right now. Good to hear it. Good to hear it. Um, I have to say that you are one of the artists who were ever ever the most involved in the Eurovision Song Contest. I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in your social media, you seem so 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 excited to be a part of it. Uh, I so am. I guess, yeah. So I guess that you really like this contest. And my question is, uh, what do you like the most about the Eurovision? What I like the most about the Eurovision is the diversity, like totally, like everybody can be there and everybody can be who they want to be at the Eurovision Song Contest, you know, there's so much color going on, there's so much diversity going on, there's, there's so much fun and different aspects of music going on and that's what I love, like the whole diversity, not, not only in the countries, not only in the, in the, in the people, but also in the music. Like there's so much diversity and I, I just, I just love it. Okay, I get it. And tell me, uh, how long have you been interested in the Eurovision Song Contest? Like, do you watch it every year or just like sometimes? I do, I do watch it every year. Like there, there were a few years where I had to work, so I couldn't watch it. But always on the next day, I looked up who won and who was the winning. So, oh my word, my hands are looking glowy right now. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that's the, that's the sunlight it's right up here. Oh, okay, uh, so like I watched it as a child with my family all the time, and later in the like later in my in my studies when I studied musical theater, one of my friends always did huge parties with live stream, and we did the twelve points in in our internal group, and we had chops for every country. So for uh, <laughs> for Greece, for example, we drink ouzo, and for Russia, of course vodka and that's like it was a lot of fun every every year was a lot of fun we always had so much fun like guessing who will win or what is our favorite and like oh no i like this one more no i like this one more let's make out okay no we didn't make out but like you you you, you get it yeah wow like the part with the alcohol which from each one country it can be really amazing and crazy yeah I, I have to think about it. Maybe we can do it uh, one more time here. <laughs> right? It's actually quite a great idea. Like, uh, like the, 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 the friend who I was organized, he had the idea. And it was, it was, it's a lot of fun. Like, but only take one shot or a half a shot because every country, there's so many countries, you get drunk pretty quickly. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> okay. Um, tell me, how would you define the Eurovision Song Contest? Like, what is it for you personally? Like, your own definition of the contest? My definition of the Eurovision Song Contest is the celebrating of music. I think what a lot of Eurovision Song Contest fans forget is that the Eurovision Song Contest got created not to be a competition, but to celebrate being together, coming together and having fun together and celebrating music together. And that is the definition for me that at first it's the music, second or third or fourth, it's the competition. Okay. Um, tell me, was it the first time for you that you were trying to become the representative of Germany? And why did you decide to take part this year in this competition? <laughs> yes, actually it was, it, was, it was, I think my first time trying to be the representative and why this year because at the time and because of corona on my oh i had a i had a bubble in my in my neck there did you hear it corona uh, no. because of corona <laughs> uh, because of corona i had um all my jobs got cancelled um so i had time to create the music video that i really wanted to create for this special song and because i put so much effort in it and i wanted to create it to audition for the for the Eurovision Song Contest, uh, but I knew it would maybe be too late. So that's why I created those 
little TikTok videos where I had the whole behind the scenes, like how I got all the washing machines, how I how I created this scene, how I how I asked my friends to come, how I got plans. Which one is still here? One of them was is still here. <laughs> we kept it because it was expensive. I don't have money. Like I did it all with my own money, which is not a lot. Um, and yeah, and I tried to audition with those little videos for the Eurovision Song Contest. That it will that it will work. I had no like. I didn't think of it. I thought, oh my word, I, I'll just try it and I just yell it in the uh, yell it out in the world like, hello, I want to go to the Eurovision Song Contest. My father was like, oh Yendrik, oh those videos, oh you shouldn't like put it out there like like you get so much hate. You shouldn't say oh, you want to go to the Eurovision Song Contest. That's oh maybe that's not good. And I was like, no, I want to do it. I want to yell it out, and I did, and it actually worked, which is yeah. so hilarious. But it worked. Yeah, this is this is pretty cool. This is the one way, your own way, and I think it was a good idea. Yeah, so, thank you. Yeah, and you made the vlogs on your Instagram called "How to Become Germany's Entry for ESC." And tell me, when did you came up with this idea, and what was the idea behind it? Well, I start initially started with how to make a music video to audition for the Eurovision Song Contest, which are still in German. I, I'm thinking about translating them in English to upload them again in bigger videos so that everybody sees how it actually started. Um, a friend of mine actually had the idea. She says, Jendrik, you wanna go to the Eurovision Song Contest so bad, why not audition for it with those little videos? And when I started, like I started it and it became, it be had a little audience on TikTok, which was so lovely. Oh, such a lovely audience. They are like, oh, this is so much fun. Oh, 18 working washing machines. Oh, this is hilarious. And when I got to the point that I could actually audition, and when I got to the point that I got to the final, and when I got to the point where they told me I will represent Germany, I was like, okay, I have to go on with those, music, with those little videos because that's how I started and that's how I want to finish this whole experience. So that's why I want to keep going with those little videos until the very end, until I stand uh, on the 22nd of May on that stage performing the song that I wrote not knowing that it'll be heard by over a hundred million people and yeah and you will have like a diary later like memories you can uh, you can exactly. add, so it's, it's awesome. oh that's lovely I will call it diaries now because now I'm finished with the whole process how I became it maybe I can do now Hendrik's diary to the to the Eurovisions I will do that diary yeah. I like that Tag me there because it was my idea. Yes, I will. I will. I will say it. <laughs> okay. And you put some Easter eggs, how you called it, in these vlogs. Like your title of the song was hiding there, and you make some games for your fans, which was also really nice. And in one of this video, you put a gif of Blas and Mafian, one of the finalists of North Melody Grand Prix. And tell me, did you do it in purpose? And was there song your favorite in this show? Well, I think I googled Eurovision Song Contest horn section and they came up and I listened to the song and I really liked it. I, 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 didn't, uh, I didn't see it as my favorite as I didn't know the other acts in the final, but I really liked it. And I was like, yes, yes, this is great. Because I have a horn section too in my song. So I was like, yes. And they were so cool with the sunglasses and everything. So that's why I put them in because I was like, Oh, this is cool. I will, oh, this is cool. And maybe maybe some people will get and get that they are actually part of the Eurovision song uh, pros, Eurovision song contest pro like whole of the whole world. And yeah, but I, I really do love Easter eggs and I will continue putting them in because uh, I I love, you know, I'm a big Swifty, like I'm a Taylor Swift fan, so and she does it all the time and I love looking for them. And I figured out that I actually love creating them too. So that's what I will be good. Will I, that's what I will be doing until until the May. Okay, so we have to looking for them and think what this it could be. So yeah, this is really nice. This is really exactly, nice. exactly. <laughs> okay, and I have to ask for the hashtag justice for the middle finger <laughs> uh, yeah because it's really quite big actually there's even an online petition you can still s sign it yes. I, think, I guess yeah, yeah yeah and people were putting it everywhere also talking about another band it's blind channel from finland they are representative yeah. of finland and 
yeah, they even sing, put your middle fingers up and they, they do it <laughs> in the performance. Um, did it come spontaneous? It was planned? Who started it? You or I, your I, I didn't plan it at all. I, I didn't plan it at all. Like I, um, like the whole thing because why Justice for Middle Finger started is because uh, the German Eurovision song, like the NDR told me, uh, Jendrik, uh, Middle Finger won't be allowed on stage, you have to change it. And I was like, I was quite bummed because in the music video, the Middle Finger is like the main mean guy. She's like, oh, I'm always grumpy all the time. So I would, I would have loved to have her on stage as the Middle Finger, as this grumpy person, because then it would represent the hate being out of work, you know? She's just there like, oh, I wanna hate, but I can't because oh, everybody's so happy here. That would, would have been such a lovely message, uh, but they told me middle finger is not allowed. Uh, so I had to change it to a peace sign and I did it in my music video. And because I, I uh, not in my music video, I did it in a little, in a little, in one of those little videos and uh, the audit, like some of the fans were like, oh, this sucks. Why, why freedom of speech? You, you should be allowed to do everything on the stage. And I was like, yes, I should be allowed to be everything on stage. And they're like, yes, we will fight for it. And one of the fans created the change.org thing. So I didn't start it. And then one of the fans sent me a video, a picture of them holding up the middle finger. I was like, yes, just show it. Because, because it's a, it, I know it's a strong message, a middle finger, but it's, such a, it's, it's just a finger, you know? It's nothing more, nothing less. Um, so that's how I got started. Like I didn't plan at all. It's <laughs> just it for middle finger. And obviously, other countries are allowed to. I'm I, I'm actually looking forward. I'm looking like I'm interested if Finland is will be allowed on the Eurovision Song Contest stage because I wasn't allowed. And I think in the rules is written that um, strong message like strong swearing and strong messages and strong signs like swearing signs and stuff is not allowed. So I will have an eye on them if they are allowed to pull up their middle fingers because I'm sadly not. But the peace sign actually fits way more better to the song anyway, so that's perfect. Yeah, me too. I will I will look for it because if they can put like two fingers maybe and it will still look like they put one. Oh, you're right. Oh yeah, they can do that. Maybe they can do that. Yeah. I initially thought of creating a ring finger costume you know, because it looks like middle finger. But then my my father was like, oh, oh, Yendrik, maybe he's so he's always worrying. It's very lovely. He was like, oh, Yendrik, maybe, maybe, maybe that's too pro, pro what's the word? Um, um, pro, 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 um, what's the word in English? Pro, um, pro, 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 provocative, provocative. Yeah, pro, pro, provocating. What's the word? Provocating, what? Provoking. provoking. That's the word. Provoking. It's my boyfriend. He's he's playing. No, he's watching something. Uh, it's uh, prov like he said. He said, "Oh, maybe it's too provoking, like doing this, because then everybody will say, why is there ring finger?' So like the people who don't know what it's about. So having a peace sign makes much more sense. Yeah, and it also fits because it's from from peace to to this. It's like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a story be between it. And what do you think about the connection, the blind channel and the hashtag uh, justice for middle finger? Does it fit? And do you like the song of blind channel? Yeah, I actually do like the song. I actually do like the song. And I love that how, how the middle finger is trending this year. Like this is, this is the thing of the Eurovision Song Contest now, the middle finger, which I really like. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like I'm looking forward to meeting them and talking about middle fingers and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that, they are totally crazy. So I think you will have a nice conversation for sure with them. Awesome. Looking forward yeah. to it. And on your YouTube channel, there's also one more song, except the Eurovision one. Uh, it calls DBDBDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDD
of somebody giving joy to another person, that person giving joy to another person and to another person to another person. So like how joy goes over. So I wanted to put that in the music video, how somebody sits there and you see he's grumpy and he's not, he's not happy with the world. He has his little rain cloud above his head. And I was like, okay. And then somebody just randomly comes. I kind of like coming randomly into my music videos. Like in the I Don't Feel Hate music video, I get pushed on this <laughs> sofa. I think I like that of, like coming randomly into a music video so i did the same like with dip dvd coming in and just like saying hey rain, rain, rain clouds only exist so that the sunshine come through so come on start like quite try to see it from different perspectives and that joy going over to the other person then he continues walking out of the frame and uh, going on with that enjoyment of of, of the way that was the idea of that music video. Okay, and I love this part. It was, yeah. I'm actually, I, I want to re pre record, like, I want to re record the, the song because I only did it with my ukulele and just a bit of a, a little beat on Garage Band. So now that I know a producer, I actually want to re record it with with a bit more beat and a bit professionally. That's why it's not on Spotify yet because I want to do it again. Okay, but I will wait for it because I really like it. It's like positive and nice. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And we are in the middle of our interview and this is time for something special with the ukulele. Yeah, <gasps> yeah. And now I will, yeah, we got it. I will ask Jendrik, because we, Poland, in this time when we record this uh, interview, we still don't know anything about our song, which will represent us in the Eurovision Song Contest this year. So I will ask Jendrik to uh, sing something which, in his opinion, could be the best and feed us in this Eurovision Song Contest. And this is a time for you. Yes, well, well, I I don't want to play any songs from the from the from from Poland because then it would be like me to the others. So I will improvise now a song on what I would what what I would like to hear from Poland. Even though maybe maybe it's too cheesy, but I will just improvise something now. Okay, if that is okay. Perfect. Okay, let's go with F major. Oh, F and B, that's great. Okay. Okay. Poland is a country in Europe. We like music and gyros. No, actually, that's Greece. No, that's actually Greece. We like other things like, what do you like? Beer? I think uh, everybody likes beer. Pierogi, we have pierogi. It's our food. Pierogi? Pierogi! We like pierogi! We like pierogi! We like pierogi! At the ESC. We like pierogi! We like pierogi! We like pierogi! At the ESC. Yay! <laughs> well, actually, well, come with a better song, please. <laughs> Don't improvise a pierogi song. I think it, it would be really interesting, actually. And yeah, and I will waiting in the comment section for your proposition. Who could sing the song We Love Pierogi in the Eurovision Song Contest? Yeah. Yeah. We love pierogi. <laughs> We love pierogi, we love pierogi at the ESC. Yeah, and the no. melody is actually really nice there. Yeah. Maybe we can change a little yeah, bit that's, the lyrics. That's how I always start right. That's how actually how I write starting songs. Like I make something up completely weird. And then I, I'm like, wait, that, that that melody is actually quite nice. Let's take it and put serious lyrics, like serious lyrics on it. Yeah. Okay. Like, I love pierogi. <laughs> Have you ever tried pierogi, like our dumplings, Polish? No, not yet. Not yet. No. Like I think I had, I had 
not not dumplings from Poland, but from Hungary, because one of my friends are from Hungary. But that, that's not the same. No. Like I need to try. I need to yeah. try them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and tell me something about yes. your music career before the ESC, and also, uh, what do you do for life? Are you only a musician, or there's something more? I actually am a trained musical theater artist. So the actor, musical theater actor, artist, like show business on stage, theater stage. So the last two years, I actually worked on stages uh, playing musical theater and little uh, little acting things. Uh, that's actually my main job. That's what I did the last two years. Uh, now that Corona started happening, I didn't have I didn't have a job for half a year, um, which was hard. But I got over it because I had. A few a little money left from the last two years, so I could I went could could come over the rounds like, and I am um, that's so that was working, and now the Eurovision Song Contest is happening, and I'm I will probably start because I really want to put out my music, like the like I don't feel hate is just one of many songs, and I don't feel hate is probably the craziest of them all <laughs> when I think about it. No, there's other others that are still crazy but i want to pu pull them out in the world and show them so my main goal will be now to so that musician is my main job and musical theater is my job next to it okay and you seems to be so positive crazy and full of energy like all the time uh, but in the same time i think you are also like responsible and involved in what you do and this is what the people can see. But tell me who you truly are. Like, um, what's your main character traits? And maybe are you more reserved, like behind the curtains, you know, in just private? Well, I think like I'm I'm not positive all the time. That's definitely not the case because nobody is. That, that's utopian to say somebody is always positive. So I'm not trying to be positive all the time. But I would actually say like the energy and stuff energetic that I'm energetic and that I try to be optimistic most of the times that's actually really my my things that I'm also when I'm private like I don't try to be something on camera or on stage that I'm not um or am I something else no he says no <laughs> so so when people say online oh he could be he's so positive or he's so energetic or he's so annoying that's probably how i am in private life too like i can be annoying too and but of course i have my moments of calming down and being being relaxed but i do not like being alone so i always have i need people around me to to keep my energy up or to be to be to calm down actually i need people around me then I calm down the most. Okay, and it's time for the song. So what's the story before behind I Don't Feel Hate? And what's the message in it? And uh, did you create it by yourself or with someone else? The message of the song is to not fight hate with hate. Like if somebody's hating on you, don't hate them back because that doesn't, that doesn't, doesn't help you because then you're only grumpy feeling hate. And it doesn't help the other person because it doesn't, the other person won't, won't learn anything from it. So I, I wrote the song initially for myself and for other people to remind myself of when I feel hate, um, that I try to find another way to deal with it. That's actually how I created the song too. Like I had, a, it was a moment, I, I won't say like the exact moment because then people will think, oh my God, oh my God, he's talking about me. But um, it was a moment where somebody pushed me down, like didn't res respected me because I'm such, as I, as, as I just said, in private, I'm also very <laughs> energetic and annoying sometimes. So people sometimes don't take me seriously, um, which, which hurts, you know, because I'm actually quite respond. Like I, I know how to, like I'm, I'm, I'm a responsible person and uh, I'm, I'm not dumb. <laughs> so people saying I'm dumb or pushing me down and saying, oh, he's such a naive and 
annoying child uh, is is kind of hurting. And in one of those moments where I was like, oh, I hate that person. How he, how 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 that person says uh, 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 so mean. Uh, I created that song to remind myself of responding with hate, not with hate, but to tell that person in a different way of respect and love that how the, that person acts is wrong. And that's how I created the song. And yes, I actually wrote it all by myself. Uh, I wrote it by myself uh, and I asked a friend to produce it with me. But um, the whole thing, the whole concept, the whole breakdown part with the trumpets, was, it was all my head before. And um, he, he was perfectly to, to put it into the, into the, into the, into the what's it called, like into the computer. <laughs> but the whole song was created before that by myself on the ukulele. Okay, and what's your idea for the staging? Uh, will it be similar to the music video or not? Actually not at all, no, actually not at all. Um, because, because people who don't know the music video won't get if they are washing machines. The great thing is I can decide a lot how the uh, performance will be. Um, and what I decided is I want to go more into the music. Um, I want to show how you can move to the music and I want to show the horn section like that you see, oh, there's actually trumpets in the song because the whole music aspect is not shown in the music video. Um, so I, I will, it will be colorful because if you go into the Eurovision Song Contest, why not have a glitter ukulele on stage? Why not have color? Why not have why not have a dance section? So it'll be all there, like the whole Eurovision thing. Because if you go on, if you go once, go for it all. Like that, it's it's my motto actually. Yeah, like in German we say "wenn schon, dann schon," which basically means all or nothing. So of course I will go for it all. Like there we will be dancing, we will be having fun, we will be celebrating, we will try to to mimic the holy colors, you know, like the holy explosion, but um, it, it, it isn't allowed on stage because for the other acts, it, it will be slippery. So we have to find another way how to do it. And it'll be a lot of colors and uh, a lot of fun. Okay, I can't wait to see it, but I have to still wait a little bit, but I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> I can do it. Yeah. Um, tell me, how do you feel like taking part in actually different Eurovision Song Contest because of all the situation? For me, uh, like my dream was it to be on that stage at the Eurovision Song Contest, which will be fulfilled. So, and I know that all the reasons why it's not as live and not as big as the last years is to protect people and to keep them healthy. So I don't see a reason to be, to be sad or hate, mad about it because I know it's for a great reason. And I and we everybody will make the best of out of it. Okay. And the slogan of the Eurovision Song Contest it's "Open Up." How do you understand the slogan, and does it mean something different for you now than maybe it was last year? Yes, I think it does. I think the whole coronavirus actually changed the motto too, because it's not only open up to everybody to, to diversity and to people and to our op opinions and everything but also open up after after this whole after everybody was closed you know like opening up to life again which will maybe maybe it won't happen in may that we will all be back to normal again after corona but it'll be a it'll be a little a little a little like hill <laughs> In the whole thing like we're going right now we're going like this and then there's your vision and then we're going back here so um yeah opening up to to life opening up to the world and maybe opening up to a bigger eurovision song contest who knows maybe maybe in 10 20 years it's not the eurovision song contest anymore but it's the world division universe world division song contest or something like that we'll yeah. see we'll see Okay, so thank you, Shirin. Thank you so much for this interview. It was Jendrik Zinkvart from Germany. That is me. Thank you so much for having me. And I wish you all the best in the final because you are already in the final of the Eurovision Song Contest. Yes, yes. oh my gosh. 
and you're going there too, Roxana, with your songs. I can, I can, I can, I can see it. I can see it coming in my vision. Thank you. I, I hope, I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> and if not, just go with another song that we created today in this, yeah. <laughs> in this interview. Okay. Okay. We will, we will do it. We will think about it. So thank you one more time and bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you.